President Mohamed Buhari seems to have put an end to speculations about a 2023 third term agenda. He wants to help reform Nigeria's electoral process instead, but are Nigerians convinced? And the Nigerian Labour Congress is saying only governors who intend to loot state funds would refuse to pay the new minimum wage and is reminding them of possible industrial disharmony. Will the new year begin with another crippling strike? This is PLOS Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. Now, President Mohamed Buhari has reiterated his intention not to contest the 2023 presidential elections and has expressed the determination to instead help strengthen the electoral process in Nigeria and across Africa. He, among other things, promised to continue to work tirelessly at home and with allies to protect the security of lives and property. His actions, he says, will at all times be governed by the rule of law. But does his antecedent encourage confidence especially when it comes to the issue of obedience to the rule of law. To make an objective overview of the president's later to Nigeria on today's program, I'm joined by John Wesley, MFR, public affairs analyst. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me, Felicity, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Oh, I almost forgot. It was just <laughs> like another working day for me today. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so he's talked about the foundations that he has laid um, since he became president and um, what they've been able to accomplish. What would be that foundation today? Would you say it is strong enough for the fight that we have in our hands? Uh, well, I, I would still say that it's still a working process because um, there are things that um, a whole lot of Nigerians uh, uh, continually question, you know, like um, the question, uh, the fight against corruption, the question, uh, the economy, the question, a whole lot of things. However, it is not out of place to mention that uh, uh, the, the foundation, the setting the blocks, let me use that word, they're setting the blocks, but you know, it's just like when you're setting the blocks and uh, you are trying to do that without maybe the architectural plan that you had before, you are coming to realize that that plan that you had before is not working for the building you actually want to build. So the challenge arose with the fact that they had to, you know, uh, get another architect to draw something and now they are trying to, so like learning to work again, you know, so that's what I see it as. However, it is uh, also important to mention that a few things are, you know, taking shape. A few things are taking shape. So you agree with his uh, position yes, that yes. Uh, the foundation is strong? Yes. All right, let's look at his, the 2023 uh, conversation that has been going on. There's been this conspiracy theories about how he intends to cling to power come 2023. He has stated categorically that he will be out of politics uh, by the time that year comes. And his focus will basically be on helping reform the electoral process. But do you think this is enough? to silence the voices that are saying he still intends to run in 2023? Well, there will always be voices, you know. It's just like um, politics, just like um, uh, as I am in Lagos, my people from Ekiti State may decide to say that uh, John Wesley will run again uh, for elections at also time. And maybe when I'm not actually prepared, or I do not even have it in mind to even run for elections, uh, they are already saying that maybe because they do not want me to run actually, or maybe because they just want to create certain troubles and all of that. Now it's same, like you mentioned, you use the word conspiracy. You know, some people will just come up with, um, just like um, at some point, some people said the president was marrying another bride, you know, and uh, it was just, something that never existed and uh, some people created it and it shut down the media you know uh, and there was a date to when the wedding would hold and all of that and it, there was actually no wedding there was actually no bride so the same thing i see with uh, the i think the 2023 uh, idea of the thing is coming from uh, the bill that somebody proposed for a six uh, uh yes, even six before year, then there's been this you know, you know so, however, if you look at, by the time, by 2023, uh, President Momo Dubwari will be very tired. 
I mean, it will be very. That is very your tired. position. No, on it that. is. It's it's something that um, I want to. I don't just want to say. At the moment, the president is tired. Okay, let's go back to that conversation yeah. about foundations. We talked about. You said you you think that you're building a fair foundation for the future, but. The former president, the former president of this country, Obasanjo, talked about his concerns that this country is being run into debt. Even though we know that the Minister of Information came out to say, ah, the debt situation is not as bad as it's being painted. What's your take on that quickly before we move on? Well, I, 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 I also, I am, I, I let me quickly say that I, I am very sorry to say that. I do not like when people who had been in a particular class before, you know, keep talking about uh, things that are happening in a class. You see, the truth of the matter is, if you were given the banter, if you were given the opportunity, if uh, if somebody like President, uh, former President Olusegun Obasanjo, had created a formidable, a strong foundation that could work without anybody, you know, uh, uh, impeding it from working the way it's supposed to work. Um, there would not be reason for some people to run a, a campaign of saying we are coming to fight corruption, we are coming to uh, reshape Nigeria. So you are basically that. saying uh, so he should be the, his the, comment should be discussed. No, I, I don't. I, as much as I want to, you know, align with elder statesmen and all of that, there are certain things I don't want to align with. I don't want to align with, you know, talks that uh, I feel that you were once there. You see, it's just like I, I keep telling people, you were once there. Okay, let me still, still with this foundation, yes. because when you say it is solid, I mean, it, they've put a solid foundation on the ground. What worries me is that part about the rule of law. Well, Remember, he, 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 in that speech twice, he mentioned, let me see if I can yes, find yeah. where I wrote it. Uh, on paragraph six, mm -hmm. he talked about, we will work tirelessly yes. at home and with our allies to support our policies Basically, he says, our actions at all times will be governed by the rule of law. That is not just one. He went on in paragraph 21 to also say, it is more important than ever to call out those who find the rule of law an inconvenience or independent regulation and irritation. Well, 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 His it, antecedent, <laughs> just recently, we have the case of Showery, yes. we have the case of Dasuki, yeah, and this same person is... With, oh, some people are actually saying, in the light of... Uh, is, this, is he being realistic, really? And you're talking about foundation. Is this the kind of foundation that we should be standing on? We all make New Year resolution, you know. And uh, most times when you make new resolutions, some people come to say, I don't want to drink again. Oh, Lord, help me. I'm not drinking again. I don't want to smoke. I don't want to, you know, womanize and all of that. And it lasts for just um, the church service. And uh, just after the church service. Are you, are you referring, you, you, you're in the roundabout where you say... No, I'm, 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 I'm just trying to establish uh, the talks about the rule of law. You okay. see, uh, let me. I want to see that as a new resolution from the president. So let me just hope that because this is not the first time we've talked about rule of okay, law. That, that's uh, that the reason I'm actually bringing it up because you talked about the foundation being strong because he is confident. He seemed confident that they are building on foundations they've laid for the fight against corruption, insecurity, and the likes. And then, if you're talking about foundation being strong, and then the rule of law is in question. Are we going to work based on hope? Well, like, like, I, like I mentioned, it's not the, when we're talking about the foundation, we're not talking about absolute now. So if we are talking about absolute, we would not be talking about uh, rule of law. It would be that, okay, uh, the, the, the rule of law has been respected to a particular level that we can say that, okay, everyone's right is being respected, is honored, and all of that. But So uh, we, we're talking about it, certain areas here. Yeah, we'll talk about uh, a solid foundation being put in place that, okay, by the time uh, this uh, tenure is over or by the time a particular time we would say that certain things would work you know, smoothly without any impediment. Now, the rule of law of a thing. You see, I have come to realize that um, there are so many factors when it comes to the rule of law. You know, I, I think there are a particular time we would say that certain things would work you know, smoothly without any impediment. Now, the rule of law of a thing. You see, I have come to realize that um, there are so many factors when it comes to the rule of law. You know, I, I think there are 
so many things that hang around uh, judgment, respect for the rule of law in this part of the world. I think when it's not in favor of certain people, there is a delay. When it's not going to affect me, well, I let it pass. But the, is there not something fundamentally wrong yeah. with that position? Because as a president and a leader of a country, you want to set example. You want to tell your citizens, follow this rule of law. Mm -hmm. And then you blatantly, not once, not twice, mm -hmm. disregard that same rule of law. And if, if the rule of law is missing, how do we progress? That's what I am saying. Like the president, it is a letter... A New Year message to Nigerians. I want to acknowledge that that area of the rule of law is the president's New Year resolution that going forward we will respect. Be so you're, you're being positive. I, that yeah, in this that's New what Year. that's my that's my uh, let me say assumption. You know that going forward we would respect the rule of law, maybe that was also what informed the uh, Christmas bonus uh, for the likes of Dasuki, for the likes of Shore to go home and all of that. I would really like to pick your brain a lot more on that, but let's just go on a <laughs> quick break and when we come back, we'll move on to other issues because that later was quite lengthy. Right. Just stay with us. This is Plus Politics. <music> You're watching Plus Politics. Um, Plus TV Africa. Okay, we were talking about the later of the yeah. president to Nigerians and want to move away from the rule of law and talk about uh, another part of that later, and that's um, agriculture. Okay. Um, he made a statement that the, for the first time in a generation uh, that um, we were able to put food on our plates that have not been imported into the country. And he also said um, the revolution in agriculture is already a reality in all corners uh, of the country. How true is this assertion in your opinion? Uh, well, to a very large extent, it's true. Yeah, to be, because um, uh, talking about uh, uh, the food on our plate not being foreign, uh, aside being a uh, public affairs analyst and other things, I, I anchor events. So, and uh, on a very light note, when I go to events, I ask questions, you know, and um, what kind of rice are you eating? And then I, I noticed that most of the events, at least I had about between November and um, December, I anchored about eight events, weddings, uh, dinners, and all of that. And um, I noticed that they keep saying it's the local rice. It's the local rice, and um, at shops and all of that, you had we had more of the local rice. And those mama put also who sell uh, the rice, they, they sell the local rice. So invariably, it simply means that uh, to a very large extent, uh, there was this uh, reduction in the foreign rice consumption. So which also we had other things. Now, talking about uh, uh, going across uh, corners of the country and all of that, I think to a large extent, we had more farmers engaged in uh, mechanized uh, farming. Very few used to use a uh, hoe and cutlass and all of that. I think we had uh, uh, more food to an extent. I think we had more food to an extent. But I will only say in the area of um, you know, access to loan by these uh, farmers, I think um, we still have challenges in that area because not, uh, most of these farmers are unable to meet up with demands from banks when they say you have to own a house in Lagos, you have to own a property in Abuja and all of that So before you can access the loan. So, so most of these people are still having challenges accessing the loan, so which could also be an impediment to uh, a greater thrive in uh, agriculture, as uh, the president has stated in the letter. So I must say that uh, to a very large extent, yes, I want to agree with the president that uh, at least uh, they've done more when it comes to agriculture. So if more has been done yeah. for agriculture. Yeah. We, we go to the border closure. Now, one of the reasons for the border closure yeah. was to you know, reduce the importation of some of these uh, foods that we eat and other uh, items as well. Uh, but this later to Nigeria, he says that he is 
they want to put safeguards mm. in place okay. before the borders will be reopened. Here you say that you're positive a lot of um, um, has been achieved in agriculture. Isn't it time the borders are opened? What kind of safeguard are you thinking that he intends to put in place that is yet to be put in place months after the borders have been closed? At least it is not up to a year the border was closed. Are you yeah. expecting it to be up to a year? I, I'm expecting that it should be up to like seven years, five years, if it's possible. What about, what, what then happens to that um, um, mm. free trade agreement that we became a part of? Well, you see, the free trade agreement wasn't something that was established yesterday. It has always been there. It wasn't something that happened yesterday. It wasn't something that happened last month. Will it take us that long, really, to we have had, safeguards we have had, on the We have had countries who shut their borders for over three years. We have had who shut their borders for 13 years, for 10 years, just for them to get it right. So if we have to get it right, if it has to take us a year, two years for us to get it right and actually get it right, I mean, not just um, uh, we just waste time, you know. If we have to get it right... Uh, uh, shutting the borders. I mean, we're just talking about the land borders right now, not um, the, or the, uh, I mean, uh, importation or, uh, of uh, maybe goods and other stuff across other means. They, they, they're still coming, but talking about the land borders, if it has to be closed for as long as possible to ensure that we can consolidate on the effort that we are putting in place. Why not? If, we have to, if it has to take long for us to ensure that those people who are you know, monitoring the borders are also refined. Because one of the problems I, I realized over time is that even when you close the borders and then you say uh, we, just for us to be able to achieve this, to achieve that, we have those who are at the borders who are still you know, uh, more like, um, what do we call them? They, 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 they twat the effort, the, the, the purpose why the borders were closed. So we, we still need a whole lot of work, you know, to be done on uh, the custom officers, all those people, the immigration, or what have you, who are around these borders to ensure that this work is a collective work and we achieve positive results, you know, going forward and all of that. So. I, I am of the opinion that uh, if the borders will remain closed for the next one year, I mean, I don't have any issues with that. All right. Let's, let's yeah. still look at efforts to grow the economy because yeah. agriculture is part of it. Yeah. Uh, investment and investors is another part. And one comment he made, uh, I don't know if we have time, we'll still look at the power sector, what he said about what they're doing. But well, on the investment side, he put forward the visa on arrival okay. as one attraction for investors to come and invest in the country. What's your take on that visa on arrival? Because it has been quite uh, controversial for some Nigerians. Yeah, it, it is because um, uh, I, I do not have issues with it if it's going to encourage, um, you know, investors to come in and uh, also, you know, invest in the economy and all of that. But um, the issue is we, we are still battling with um, security challenges, you know. So if these guys have to come in, uh, get visas on arrival, we don't know who is who. It's not like we have um, a spiritual check that would run a check and identify this human as a criminal or this person is a potential threat to a society and all of that. So we don't know who is who. So I think uh, for that to be uh, properly uh, achieved, I think one of the areas that should be looked into is the area of security. How do we you know, ensure that those people who come in and also get visa on arrival, what's the process? What are the modalities that will be put in place to ensure that criminals do infiltrate our society, our community, uh, you know, going by this visa on arrival policy and all of that? So that's the only challenge I have. Away from that, I think it's a very welcome uh, uh, initiative such that it can also uh, um, help the economy to thrive it, 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 and the people can also be sure of, okay, you, you have prospect if you come in here to do business and all of that. But we must also be careful of those who come in. How do we identify that this person uh, is coming in to, you know, do business or is coming in to, you know, become another... I think uh, maybe there should be a rethink of that visa yes, on arrival yes, yes. policy. Yes, yes, yes. There should be a careful you know, uh, 
uh, modality that will be followed. The security aspect is very, very important. Okay, let's talk quickly about the power sector. Um, yeah. That's a major issue for the economy because a lot of persons says if we get power right, every other thing will follow. And one of the issues that was raised uh, in that later was the deal with uh, Seaman, among uh, others, uh, how to uh, basically revamp, um, get uh, generation, yeah. uh, transmission, and distribution. He assured Nigerians that the project will be mm. under close scrutiny and transparency. Uh, there is, he said, there's, there will be no waste, no theft and all of that. How confident are you, considering our antecedent with, you know, setting up these gigantic deals and all of that? We have the recent one that we're still battling with, mm -hmm. um, the F and PNID yeah. uh, issue. So how confident are you that this deal will be seen true by, say, the time he leaves office? Well, I'm, I'm not very confident about uh, the deal because... Uh, 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 during the time of uh, President Olusegun Obasanjo, uh, there were several deals. During the time of Goodluck Jonathan, there were deals. Uh, you know, I, I think there is something about our power sector. I think there are certain hands that should be chopped off. You know, once those hands are chopped off, no matter the magnitude of the deal, it will succeed. That's what I feel. Because uh, if we have, we have spent too, too much into power and we have generated a very, very low. You know, we have not, if, if we want to go by what has been invested into the power sector, by now, every, every nook and cranny of this country should be, you know, Lighting. talking about constant power supply. There should be no power failure anywhere. But it simply means that there are certain hands, you know, that should be chopped off. If they are that's not, that's another aspect of corruption fight, and you see them taking it on. Yeah, that, that's that's what that's, well, that's why I'm saying that I do not, um, I do not even want to, I do not even want to see this as uh, something that until we, until, you see, I was privileged to be somewhere, you know, I, I was listening to a conversation, and uh, uh, my my brother who is abroad, you know also attested to it, and uh, the conversation went this way. I'm going to just say it. I'm not going to mention names. It went this way. Ah, this one that you people are planning to uh, uh, you know, work towards constant power supply, don't you think it's going to affect our business? <laughs> Let me just leave that yeah. close like that. Yeah. It, uh, this is something that I heard. It's not about uh, they say it, I. So beyond government do doing understand? real work, there so has to be a will by the we, people. You to need to them. chop off. You need to chop off the hands that we not make it work. If you, if you don't do that, we will continue to you know you know merry go round over power power power. We have spent too too much. To, okay, let us assume that, okay, if you are not even talking about the entire 36 states and the FCT, let us have maybe like 10 states plus FCT. Let us have it that we have constant power supply. Let it be a model that, okay, in the next four years, in the next 10 years, the entire states in Nigeria Wow. You know. Okay, let's let's move on and look yeah. at the issue of stolen funds. Uh, the president, uh -huh. he, uh, he is saying that the president himself is saying that they are expecting more returns of stolen funds this year, and that it will be dealt with with transparency and all of that. Considering the fact that we've had funds returned previously, how transparent do you think this government has been with? the use of that fund for the development of this country? I cannot tell how transparent it has been because um, they are still in power. And, um, well, at least we should have had some form of data, some, some of information as to well, how this money is being I, spent. If, 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 well, I, I've, heard, I've heard of um, uh, the monies being spent on uh, infrastructure. You know, uh, the, what's it called? The federal government home that uh, they're building for you know, uh, is it, uh, uh, what, what, what the, that's the name they called it, that are building for uh, people to be able to, uh, you know, the, uh, make it affordable for people to be able to own such homes. I've heard that uh, funds from, uh, uh, proceeds from corruption, they returned, you know, funds returned and all of that going to uh, 
such projects and other projects like that. You know, so how true it is, I don't know. But the truth of the matter is, I, I think when I went through a uh, budget, uh, you know, they usually they will come up with a breakdown. This is what was spent. This is how it goes. I did not actually see anything about you know, uh, proceeds from, uh, return. you know, return and right. all of that. But I know that they have always mentioned that uh, the, the, the proceeds go into infrastructure. All right. I'm afraid we'll have to leave it there for now. The, the lecture is quite a lengthy one, yeah. a lot of talking points on it. But thank you so much for your thoughts so far. Thank you for having me. All right, we'll be right back. Uh, thank you for staying with us thus far. Up next, we look at the likelihood of starting the new year on a sore note as the NLC threatens strike. Stay with us.